I have a few housekeeping items to let you know first. Um, if you are a capacity building or community access grantee, Tanya Howe wants you to meet her in the lobby at 1210. At 1210, you'll still be in here. So if you would meet her 10 minutes after we dismiss uh, in the lobby, the community capacity building and community access grantees are going to meet Tanya Howe 10 minutes after we dismiss in the lobby. Also, tomorrow, um, there was a, a, an omission in the program. So if you are, uh, if Barbara Swores is your FPO, your cluster session is going to be in Virginia B. So all, all those who, um, Barbara Spores is your FPO, can you raise your hand? Great, I can't really see, but you, <laughs> you're going to be in Virginia B tomorrow at 2.15. Okay. We are here with the Promoting Responsible Fatherhood panel, uh, Reentry and Beyond. And we are, in, L L L in OFA, we have funded 12 programs in the Priority 5 area that, whose primary target is incarcerated parents, as well as a few other programs that are in other priority areas that work with incarcerated or formerly incarcerated programs. And we're doing this because statistics have shown that 2.3 million children have a parent that is behind bars. And I've gotten that statistic, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm doing a shameless plug, but the ICF macro and the CUF, CFUF um, team is developing a toolkit that's being user tested in the um, exhibit room. So please stop by to do the exhibit testing. It's a toolkit of promising practices and how to get your program up and running. Uh, they also have found and have stated in this document that, tr that fathers who commit to uh, raising their children are less likely to reoffend. So what we wanted to do today is to talk um, to showcase two of our programs in the Promoting Responsible Fatherhood program that are actually working and being effective in their community. So first we are going to I'm going to turn this over to Charles Ikewe, and <laughs> close, close enough, and um, Winning's Fathers Program in Prince George's County. They are part of the Maryland Human Resources Grant, and he is going to introduce to us two of his family, two of his couples, who are Ron Boyd and Teresa Evans, as well as Eric Clark and Shadell Kenny. So we are so very proud and so very privileged that you would take time out of your busy schedule to come and um, share with us your experiences of how this program is helping your lives and also helping the lives of our communities. Thank you so much. Uh, after we finish with the uh, Winning Fathers, we will turn it over to um, people of principle out of Texas. And there we have Billy and Lamar Petty, who will talk us, to us um, from two points of view, one as service providers and as couples who have been through the program. So thank you very much. Trying to make sure I don't say good morning when I should say good afternoon. Well, it's a privilege and honor to be here. However, before I introduce my couple here, I would like to recognize the presence of the man that gives me the money from the state of Maryland, Johnny Rice is sitting down there. And also the man that brought me to this program, who is my uh, program manager. Bill Hall is somewhere here. Please, wherever he is, he has done an outstanding job. Uh, we represent the Priority Five, the state of Maryland, which uh, comprises Montgomery County, Prince George's County, and Talbot County. What you see here today, just two couples from Adam's house. That's in Prince George's County. We are not a religious organization, but these two men that I've mentioned their name allowed me to tell a little story to our fathers when they walked through the door. The first thing I asked them, it's do you know the problem that Adam had? His crime wasn't just because he ate the forbidden fruit. At Adam's house, we believe that one of the crimes of Adam was his failure to take responsibilities. And when they walk through that door, I'll ask you, my brother, are you ready to take responsibilities? 
And when the answer is yes, you will have a seat. So it's my privilege today, and I feel very honored. Ron, Teresa, Eric, Shadell, we've come a long way. And I feel very honored that you allow me to work with you and continue to work with you. So ladies and gentlemen, these are the couple. I'm not going to take too much time. I'll have my seat. If you have any questions for them, please, they are here to answer. Thank you. So Shadell and, and Eric, if you would like to tell us your story. Good morning, everybody. My name is Eric Clark, and this is Shadell Kenny, my fiance. Hello. <laughs> Um, the Adams House program has been a huge blessing to me, to us, to my sons, to our kids. Um, our communication was always great, but you know it can improve, and the Adams House has helped our communication improve. Um, it helped me become a better father, helped me become a better fiance, and we're not married yet. Um, also, the Adams House just, <laughs> it'll be there soon, it'll be there soon. Um, also, the Adams House, it, it just, it's a blessing to be able to go to a place where men can gather and talk and share their emotions. You know, um, some are raised to say that men shouldn't cry, but I believe that men should cry, let it out just like the ladies do. <laughs> um, like I said, Adam's House has just been wonderful to me. It's been wonderful to us. Um, it's helping us do everything that we need to do as far as raising our kids and as far as getting married and keeping it together. Thank you. Hello, um, as he has already said before, my name is Shardell Kenny. Um, it has also been a blessing to me, uh, bigger and more advancement. Um, I have had the pleasure of having both of my parents in my life, but they were separate. So I come from a blended family. Um, it has just been a big extension of what I already know. I have two kids, um, a boy and a girl, one who is three months um, and it's just been a very good experience and something that I will continue to do and pass it on to my children. Um, a lot of times we as adults, we forget that, you know, we have to pay a lot of attention to our kids and we might need some advice and we don't know everything. So we can't just always assume that our way is the best way. And going to the Adams house has basically open my heart and open my ears to receive and take the advice and actually practice it. Thank you. <laughs> Eric and Shadell, I have a question for you. What type of services did you receive? Did you have um, relationship classes or what type of programs were you offered at Adams House? Um, I actually started out at the Adams House um, taking anger management classes and they have a Monday night group sessions where the men come and they meet in one room, talk about everything, and the women come and they meet in one room and talk about everything. And um, at the end of the sessions, they actually brought it together where they had the men and the women in the same room. So together, I guess you can say we did the Monday night sessions, the group sessions. Okay, and then group sessions, do you talk about communication skills or what do you, what kind of things do you talk about other than anger management? Do you talk about um, how to communicate with each other, how to express your feelings? Um, yeah, we talk about communication between the man and a woman, communication between children, um, just life experiences, um, how you went through things, uh, other ways of, you know, doing things, you know, being angry can sometimes take over our um, emotions and we have to figure out how to, you know, keep it calm and 
and talk respectfully and, you know, just keep the communication going versus getting upset and outright. Because when, once you start yelling, you're really not listening to the person at all. You're just going off of emotions and anger. Okay. So uh, when you are angry, do they give you a, like a particular skill or something you're supposed to think about to help you calm down or help you communicate your feelings better? Um, <laughs> I can say yes and I can say no. Um, I know Charles introduced Bill. Bill always told me that you don't have any buttons to be pressed. You decide that you get angry because of what the person has said or what the person has done. You control your feelings, you control your actions. So most of the time, I just try not to get mad. Okay, <laughs> good. And what about your children? Um, have you seen an improvement in your relationship with you and your children? Yes, um, I've always, uh, I have always had a wonderful relationship with um, both of my sons and it's, it's just improving just improving by the day. It's just, I, I live for them. I live for the family. Um, just like I heard somebody earlier say that um, if you love that woman, then protect that woman and protect your family. I am the man of the household. I'm the head. So therefore, um, everything has to run through me. So yeah. Thank you, Eric. You go. Okay. Ron and Teresa, with, are you ready to tell us your story? Yeah. Uh, Hello? Oh. <laughs> yes. yes, my name is Ronald Boyd, and this is my wife, Trace, Teresa Evans. Um, I'll let her speak first, and then let me say this. For once in my life, I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm actually shaking, and I, I'm a professional boxer, so being nervous is, is nothing, but I'm actually nervous here today, so I'm going to let her speak, and then I'll speak. <laughs> Hi, my name is Teresa Evans, and um, like my husband said, uh, we, uh, we're married. The way that I actually was introduced to the Adams House was I received a phone call from Charles. My experience as far as the intake coming into the program is a little bit different from my husband's. My husband had went to the program to receive services for anger management. And in him meeting with Charles, Charles felt that it was important for me to be a part of that because me and him do have that intimate relationship and a lot of the conflict in our life, you know, that he was talking about or going through dealt with relationship issues. And so when Charles called me, it was kind of ironic because I am, I, I'm on the front line just like you guys. I have had um, many years of experience working for a nonprofit agency in Washington, D.C., actually the oldest nonprofit agency in Washington, D.C., which was Friendship House. And so I work with these type of families every day. I, you know, I, I was, you know, the one that worked with the mothers to get WIC and the babies to make sure that they get, you know, free health insurance and the teens that needed to get information on, um, you know, treatment for HIV and TANF recipients. And, you know, I was there to, to be that lending hand to, to give them the answers that they needed to, to get over, you know, the shortcomings that they had you know, to get served where they were underserved. And actually, I was the one that was needing those same type of services, but couldn't be honest with myself about it. And so when Charles called me, I was actually sitting down with a family, you know, with, a, with one of my parents. You know, she was talking to me about being a battered woman, and I'm telling her some of the agencies that she can go to in the, in the city to receive services, when in actuality, I was looking at myself in the mirror. I was a battered woman. You know, and before we came out here, I asked my husband, was it okay for me to really be honest about why we came to the Adams House? Because I was being battered at the hand of my husband. He's a professional boxer. So all of his aggression came physically. And so he came for anger management, but actually, I came because I needed someone to help me 
you know, I was always helping other people, but I needed somebody to help me, and Charles became that savior. He, he allowed me to realize that I don't have to be a victim anymore. You know, he allowed me to realize that, you know, all of the, the hurt and all of the baggage that I was carrying around in my life that allowed me to be, you know, almost susceptible or drawn to abusive relationships, not just my husband. I, I, I had more abusive relationships before this, but, you know, just helping me to see that I don't have to be that victim anymore. And so we actually went through the, you know, healthy marriage program, and we're still in the healthy marriage program. So that's how I came to Adam's house, but I'll let my husband speak on how he came to Adam's house. Once again, I'm Ronald Boyd, and I am of the Adams House. I'm a product of that, I can say. Um, I came way right through the Adams House because um, I had a clothing store that was in the Sulin area. And the gentleman that cleans the property, uh, let me back up. Me and my wife was arguing one day. It was a Sunday. She go get in the car and say, I'm going to church. I say, OK. You know, she was like, you need to you stay at home. I was like, nah, I'm gonna drop you off. She was like, you're not dropping me off. So she put up at the police station. <laughs> she dropped me off. <laughs> like I told the judge, and I said, and I said it to Charles when I first went there, and I said it to y'all, and I said it to the world, leaving is not an option for me. When I stood before God, I said I do, not knowing I had a problem. You know, she mentioned counseling. I said, man, I'm not going. Nobody can tell me about my problem. If it's not a problem if I don't say it's a problem. Then one day I walked in. I called and spoke to uh, Mr. Bill first. And then when I walked in, I was supposed to be seeing Mr. Bill, but I seen Mr. Charles. And um, that, that first day, I let it out. You know, I told him that leaving is not an option for me. And I actually cried. How barbaric it may sound at the time to me, but it was real. You know, and, and, I, and I tell them time and time again, I love my wife. And that's what I really do. I really love my wife. We're not here for no infidelity or nothing like that. We're here because I have a problem with my hands. And I had a problem with the way you would talk back to me. You know, I, I'm a, I thought I was old fashioned. You know, back in the day, a woman couldn't talk to a man like that. Excuse me. I apologize if I'm wrong for saying it, but that's how I felt. So this would. You know, I go in there and sit down in front of Charles, and he talked to me just as words as she did, so it don't even matter. <laughs> so, so that's what, you know, and I have to say that trust was a hard word for me to say, but I did trust Charles. You know, I, our last, the, one of my sessions, you know, we got heated, so heated, I walked out, he told me you'll never leave like that again. You know, but once again, it's the Adams House is really, Excuse me, I'm a little shaking a little bit. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Right? We appreciate this. Okay, the Adams House has really made me the man I am today. You know, my daddy was a good dad, you know, and the way he brought me up was, well, I'm not going to say he brought me up, but I was a product of it. If he would hit my mom, it would be all right. Just give her some money, she'd go to the store, she'd be all right. And that's what I thought being a man was until I came in the fold. And then I understand. You know, we, have our, we still have our differences today, but today is better than yesterday. And yesterday was better than the day before that. So with that in mind, I can say that I'm proud that I did walk through the Adams house. And let me say this, anywhere where it's free and it's counseling and then they're hearing your problem, that's the love they have for it. Uh, many days I walk out the door and if I play kick, we play kickball, that's strengthening our relationship as well. We go on the kickball field, and you got families out there, married, married couples, you got a problem, you're talking about leaving, man, you need to go to Adam's house. I got some place for you to go. They, they, they good up there. You hear me? They good, they save mine. I'm still here. You know, so, and I, once again, it's, it's a privilege to be amongst you all, and um, I thank the Adam's house for calling me and my wife and, and inviting us out because it's something that we wouldn't want to miss. And if I can't say how we met, 
ours is a little different from y'all's. We met in the club. <laughs> and I told her I was with the five heartbeats. I'm shy. And, I, and that's how I got her. <laughs> that's great. Thank you, Ron. And I think all of us are realizing that it's, we, life is about one step at a time. Can you tell me how your, your relationship has changed since you've been at the Adams House? Either one, both? I think, I think for me, the, re the way that the relationship has changed for me is um, my parents were together for, you know, when I was younger up until a certain point, and they separated. And I was a daddy's girl, so it was a very, very traumatic experience for me. Um, and for many years, I blamed my mom for that. And, you know, I carried that with me for, for a long time. And, and in addition, you know, not having a, a father in the household, I never was able to see how a woman and a man you know, have that intimate relationship that comes with marriage. So, like the couple was saying before, I didn't have that um, assessment to, I didn't have that modeled relationship, so I came in blind. As, you know, up until the point that I got married, you know, everything in my life outside of, you know, what people knew about me, what I shared with the world was success. You know, in my professional, in, um, my, in my professional life, which I overcompensated for, you know, I was very successful and I knew what to do and I knew how to climb the corporate ladder and I knew, you know, that this is how I'm going to be assessed by my supervisors or my peers or this is what's expected of me because I have a job description or a work scope, you know, so I was able to determine my actions based on those things, because those things were there, but I didn't have the tools to become a wife or to handle, you know, what comes with being a wife and problem-solving strategies and coping mechanisms to deal with, you know, being a wife and, you know, being with him and accepting him for who he is and the things that came, you know, with him as far as his past and us blending our, our relationship because we both had children and, you know, parenting, which is still one of the hardest things for us now because I was a single mother for so long that I had my own parenting style. So when he came in and he became a father figure in, 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 the, in the household, it, we, it's a lot of conflict. And we still, like he said, the last time that we had a uh, we met with Charles, and he had it. We had a heated discussion, and he walked out, and he didn't come back at all. He didn't come back. So, just so y'all know, it was that 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 serious. You know, he's back. He came home, but he didn't come back to the counseling <laughs> session. But it was because, you know, it's hard for me, as as a parent. You know, my daughter has a hard time with you know, him disciplining her or him speaking to her about the things that she should and she should not be doing because the way that he does it is not the same way that I do it. And so, you know, she, she internalizes that and it caused a lot of conflict and rift between us as parents because, you know, he sees it some way and I may not necessarily agree. And so, you know, things like that, we're, we're still trying to, trying to work on. And um, I don't know what else to say. What do you have to say, Boo? <laughs> well, I think that's great. <laughs> we're all a work in progress, so yes. um, we're all moving forward. I'm going to switch a little bit. Uh, we have uh, going to a different part of the country, going to the Midwest, um, to Texas, um, people of principle. And we have Bill, Billy Petty and Lamar Petty, who are both instructors and have been a part of their healthy marriage class. So can you tell us your story? Sure. Uh, my name's Billy Petty, and we're from the Midland, Odessa. And first thing I'd like to do is apologize for bringing all this hot weather up here. <laughs> I got out, and I didn't think I'd left anywhere. I thought the plane had just gone around in a circle. Uh, first of all, what I'd like to tell you about is our program, People of Principle. Uh, 
it started off a couple of years ago as basically a fatherhood program for incarcerated fathers, uh, fathers who were actually on parole at the time. And we changed it up a little bit and it basically made it a healthy marriage and responsible fatherhood program where we were able to get the wives involved. And we talk about things like communication and listening skills and, and you know, and about how we feel and, and, and talk about those things. We also talk about domestic violence um, and sharing our feelings, making time for each other and having fun. And we also talk about how to break the institutionalized mind. Um, and to tell you a little bit about how I got involved in it is uh, actually, I think I was tricked a little bit at first. Uh, <laughs> it was my attorney uh, had volunteered my name and, and uh, <laughs> myself, I am uh, ex uh, an ex-convict. I have been to prison in, in Texas three different times uh, for a total of nine years, I was incarcerated. And uh, when I got out, the wife that I did have before I was incarcerated was no longer there. And, uh, and I didn't have a part of that in my family. And, and when I got out, I had gotten involved in a relationship with my wife now. And he suggested that I go check this out. And what happened is, is it was a fatherhood program. Uh, the teacher that we had at the time, who is the gentleman who pretty much has made changes and, and, and helped with the program, Ron Brewer, we, uh, I went through the class with him as he taught it and then I started teaching also. And, and the neat thing about that was, is we started off teaching uh, at the parole office to, to guys and, and I really didn't know the impact that, that that could have but when I first started and I told them where I had been we had a common bond and, and things just took off and and uh, but the main reason that I took it is because I had gotten involved in a relationship and my wife now had two children and I didn't know how to be a father uh, my father committed suicide when I was nine years old, and uh, and then I got heavily into alcohol and drugs, and and so much there went my story as far as going to prison. And uh, when I got out the last time, I did not want to go back, and, and I didn't know how to change. And and the key for me was was asking for help. Uh, and I didn't know what to do. And in that process, as I, I started going to 12-step recovery programs, and I, I've been sober since March the 26th of 2002. And, <laughs> and by doing that, I got involved in this. And, and uh, the main reason I wanted to is like I had mentioned, my wife had children. Uh, and when we first started dating, she had a son that was 15 years old. And he had taken his mother's car one night. And I had gone over there to talk to him. And the talking came, basically him coming after me with a baseball bat. And uh, there was a confrontation that happened. and. From that point on, that child hated my guts. And I had no idea how to be a father or how to repair that relationship. Uh, through the things that I've learned through these programs, uh, especially the communication, we were able to talk, sit down and talk. And, uh, and that relationship today is absolutely incredible. As a matter of fact, today he is 20 years old today. And uh, and he also 
works for the same company that I work for, and he is in Arkansas. And, you know, through those changes and, and not raising my voice or, or, or anything like that, you know, we, we communicate. When there was problems, when he was living at home, you know, we had certain rules, but if he broke a rule, there wasn't yelling. We sit down and we talked about it and what the expectations that we had as parents and expectations that we had of him living in, in our home. And what's happened, and to me, it's just an all absolutely great feeling is just like yesterday morning when we were getting ready to come down here, he called and he was having some problems. And he called me, and we got to talk about it, you know. And uh, the one thing that I explained to him, he is a young man that went through some tough times, and he had quit school and, and gotten involved in drugs a little bit. Uh, and I, basically what I told him is whatever choices you make, we still love you. There may be some uh, consequences to your choices, and these may be some of them. But, and through those, you know, discussing those issues and, and discussing those things, that relationship has blossomed. Uh, as far as, it, it's also kind of neat is that when our program kind of switched and changed, uh, I was in a relationship and we got married uh, November will be two years, and uh, we got married on the 10th of November, and I believe it was the 24th of November, we were in our first uh, healthy marriage seminar. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I wanted to do that also because I didn't know how to be a husband. I didn't know how to have relationships. I, I you know, like the... Uh, Reverend, Reverend had talked about earlier is that I was not taught that growing up. I had no idea how to do those things. And, and what I have seen is it's helped our communication. We, we have fun together. You know, last night we were talking with some of the other people that we came up here with uh, about having fun in your relationship and especially with the economic times like they're talking about, is having dates that don't cost very much and, and, and doing the things that you can do just to have fun and, and, and take the time to do those things. And, and we have a blast you know, in our relationship. But the one thing that, you know, I, I, when I got here and I saw the sign that before the meeting of the OFA, about the strong practices and the bright promises. Uh, you know, when Reverend was talking earlier about the principles of family and about the principles of fatherhood, um, you know, practicing those principles in everything we do, in our job, our family, you know, just everything that we do, treat people the way we want to be treated. And if that happens, the promises that, that will come true are just wilder than you can ever imagine. You know, I never thought that five and a half years ago when I was sitting in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice that I would be involved in something like this. And, and to me, Today, this is one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me in my life. You know, uh, he talked about the passion and, and purpose. And, you know, today we go into prisons and, and we, with guys who are getting close to getting out of prison and their wives show up and have stuck by them, we get to spend time with them and let them know that there are resources out there when you get out that can help you. And, uh, you know, it just... I just get excited when I see that. Well, thank you. Thank you, Billy. Thank you. Oh.
I do have to say this one thing. Uh, I forgot. Ron told me that if I didn't inter introduce my wife, oh, that I would problem. be in in serious trouble. My wife's name is Lamarck Petty, but for all of us, we call her Muffin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I won't do that, but Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, everybody. My name is Lamar Petty. And um, pretty much Billy gave you the full story. Um, I actually met Billy uh, when I was two days sober, and he was two months out of prison. So we were just uh, starting a journey, and we have walked through recovery together. We're both very active in a 12-step recovery program, and so that's how we got to know one another and became friends and then began dating. And as he said, my son was not his biggest fan. Um, and what I saw happen after Billy began teaching that class was him learning a lot of patience. You know, it's funny how when you're teaching something, sometimes you also become a student. And, and he really did. And he learned patience, and he learned to listen, and he learned to feel compassion for my son, even though he was making mistakes and doing some things that we really didn't approve of. Um, you know, he's, he's a human being and kind of lost and had gone through my divorcing his father and you know, it, it was just kind of a mess for him. And like Billy said, in, in the time that has transpired, they have really developed a close relationship. My son calls Billy more than he calls me. <laughs> he does. And, and, but the cool thing about that is that I think it's important. You know, that father role is very important, and my son needed a dad. You know, quite honestly, his, his own dad did not have a great relationship with him, and I'm not saying anything ugly about his father. I'm just saying that's how it was. And Billy has, through learning these principles and practicing these principles that we learn in this program, he's been able to be a dad. And my son, Chris, probably wouldn't even use that word to describe the relationship, but that's the relationship that you see from an outside point of view and that I see from a mother's point of view. And, and so that's how it has really, really touched our lives and, and has made a better life for a child, a 20-year-old child, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's been a huge improvement. We're very grateful. Okay, thank you. Thank you. One question I know Patrick asked the other panel that I, being nosy, am just interested in. I know I know when you met, but how did you meet? How did you meet your wife? Actually, I'll, I'll answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was my second day sober, so I wasn't in the best of shape. Anyway, we met, we met at a meeting. We, um, I had actually gone to a meeting um, that I don't normally go to. And I was trying to avoid a woman who I met at that meeting. She happened, she was the first one I saw and I was trying to avoid her. Anyway, she ultimately became my sponsor. Uh, <laughs> go figure. Um, but anyway, she scooped me up and she said, come on, you're gonna come to my house. We're gonna sit down and have a conversation. And she grabbed Billy, whom I'd never met before and said, come on, we're gonna go to my house. You know, we're gonna, I guess, tag team her. And um, so we, we went to her home, and that's the first time I met Billy, and we just became acquainted, and that's, that's where we met. Okay, good. Um, Eric and Shardell, how did you meet? Um, we actually originally met in high school. Um, we went to the same high school together, which was um, Fallsville High School in Prince George's County, Maryland. Um, we was real good friends throughout our years in high school, and she actually moved back to Georgia right before we all graduated. So I didn't see her for a very long time, and um, I went through some downfalls in my life that resulted to me being on the home detention program for Prince George's County. And God brought her back into my life for a reason. I mean, 
if I this young lady right here, um, I don't think I really would be where I am today as a man. So. We ran, we ran into each other at the mall about a little over a year ago, and um, sparks flew and ever since then. Here we are. <laughs> Very good. That's, now, Ron and Teresa, we know you met in a club, but who, <laughs> who introduced themselves to the other first? Let me tell my side of the story. <laughs> <laughs> According to my husband, I was looking at him from across the room all night, so I was giving him the eye. And so, and so when I was leaving the club, it, it, it was actually my 26th birthday, and so all of my girlfriends, we had went to dinner and we decided to go out afterwards, and he had went with some of his friends. And so as I was leaving the club, I had walked out first to go and pull the car around to meet my girlfriends, and he's out there with his friend. And so he's walking a little bit ahead of me, and he turns around, and, you know, he, sp he says something to me. And orange then pants. He called me orange <laughs> pants. I had orange <laughs> pants on. So he says, orange <laughs> pants. And at first, you know, my first, you know, thought was, I don't know who he think he's talking to calling me orange pants. <laughs> 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 you know, um, and so... You know, he said, orange pants, um, why don't you come over here and talk to me? And, and so I said, no, you need to come and talk to me if you want to speak to me. So then that's when he said, well, I'm from the Five Heartbeats and my name is Shy. <laughs> <sighs> Same year, ne we engaged, the next year we married, this be our second year right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, September the 9th to be exact. So we have two two-year-old marriages here. Almost two. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> um, I have a question for Billy and Lamar. You said that you went to healthy marriage class two weeks after you got married. So can you tell the difference prior, during your engagement to your marriage? Because it wasn't any time to change after your marriage. Uh, yeah, I can tell you a whole lot. Matter of fact, I can tell you a story right now that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've learned a whole lot, and one of the things I learned is about not being so self-centered. And, and probably being in Washington, D.C. right now, this is probably not going to be the most popular thing that I talk about, but it was my wife's birthday. And uh, I asked her what she would like to do on her birthday, and, and her birthday is in December, and she said all she wanted to do was stay home and watch It's a Wonderful Life on TV. And I'm thinking, man, how boring. <laughs> <laughs> and also, this is the part that's probably not going to be real receptive, is that I am a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan. <laughs> Billy, I was trying to keep that a secret. I, I wasn't going to hold it against you. But <laughs> But, uh, and the Cowboys were playing that night, but they were on the NFL Network, so I couldn't see it. So I was trying to figure out how I could get away <laughs> with this. And I had gone to Walmart, and I had bought a little transistor radio with the little earpiece. And I was thinking, you know, we can watch TV, and she'll never know it. <laughs> and I, I wired the wire up through my shirt, and I had it in my ear. <laughs> And we're watching It's a Wonderful Life. There was only one serious problem is uh, at the time, Julius Jones broke a run for about 60 yards for a touchdown. And I was going, go, go, go. <laughs> and she said, what are you doing? And I says, this movie is so exciting, I just can't <laughs> handle it. And uh, she noticed the earpiece in my ear. And it was not a pretty sight. And she didn't talk to me for a little while. And uh, 
actually Ron asked me, he says, well, what did you do? And I was like, well, she was already mad, so I finished listening to the game. <laughs> We'll repair this later. <laughs> but uh, I have learned not to be so self-centered, especially on her birthday. <laughs> so, yeah, I've learned a lot from that. I think that's a, <laughs> a very important lesson. Lamar, did you want to add? Sure. <laughs> and I married him anyway. <laughs> But, uh, no, you know, and I, I really, I was at a point where I really thought we were okay. I mean, we were getting married, and the relationship is good, and, you know, he's, but after going through the class together as participants, um, you can't help but learn something, and I think our, our communication, particularly our listening skills, have improved tremendously. Um, I think the way we look at each other is different. We, we go through a module called the five love languages and, and we learn kind of what makes the other person tick because we all respond differently to different things and we're not all wired the same. And so I kind of know what he needs and he kind of knows what I need and it's not always the same thing and that's okay. We're on the same team. And you know, like with regard to the whole football thing, He's passionate about a couple of things, golf and football. Just because I'm not doesn't mean that it's not really, really important. That's important to him. And so it's important for him to have that time to, to do those things. And, you know, I don't have a problem. I can keep myself occupied doing something else. I have friends. We have more than one television, you know. <laughs> I can do something else. So it's, it's a lot of compromise, give and take, um, that I don't believe was there. Um, any manipulation, I think, that maybe used to be there, that doesn't happen anymore. We're just pretty, pretty honest with each other and, and try to really be considerate and respectful of one another. Thank you. I just have two last questions, and that's for um, Eric and Ron. Would you recommend Adam's House to some of your friends, and if so, why? Yes, I definitely would. Um, like I said before, the Adams House is a place where men can come and gather together. And like, I've never seen anything like I've seen at the Adams House before. I recommend it to everybody. I recommend it to my friends, um, church members, family members, um, even if you are not incarcerated or you didn't just come out of incarceration, even you know if you're just married and you have a family, I still recommend it because there's still things out there that you can learn. And of course, as a young person, I thought that I knew everything, but it turns out that I did. <laughs> Good, thank you. Ron? Yes, yes, I would recommend the Adams House to any and everybody. Um, it really helped me you know, become the person I am today. And, you know, changes go around. The same faces you see going up, you're gonna see them same faces coming down. So pretty much, you know, um, it's, it made me a better person. Charles made me a better person. I'm, I'm, if I can say, one day, when I first went in, I did the little intake, and Charles said, well, go ahead on over there, because they starting the class, they starting the night session over there, and I call you back up here tomorrow to do the interview. When I go over there, they was talking about um, relationship or something like that. I said, man, I'm in here. I said to Mr. Bill, I said, man, I'm in here because I got an attitude problem. He said, oh, you need to sit down some more. <laughs> you know, and that's just to let you know that it, it's, it's a broad perspective and it's, it's a really learning experience. And I really learned a whole lot. I really learned to be a man, you know, from a boy to be a man. I'm, you know, I, like Eric said, I thought I knew it all. I'm a, person that been incarcerated for 12 and a half years, you know, and 12 and a half good years, because I learned a whole lot, and I learned even more in the Adams House. What I didn't know then, what I knew now. So yes, I would. Thank you. We are out of time, but I just want to thank you so much. I want to thank Ron and Teresa, and Eric and Shadell, 
and Billy and Lamar. Thank you for sharing your stories. And I wanted to say, and teaching us a few things, so thank you. Thank you.